All right, and we've arrived at the final step of our heavy weapon journey. We are at the final steps. We are at the linear fusion rifle class of heavy weapon. Uh, there's only a couple linear fusions in the game, actually. There's like, what, 11? I think there's, yeah, there's like 11. There's, there's almost nothing. There's almost nothing. Linears are a relatively new addition to Destiny 2. Pretty young in terms of the total game's lifespan. But let's, uh, let's go over all the linear fusions. Uh, I'm going to briefly talk about what linears are used for in endgame content. And then I'm going to talk about how I've actually structured my tier list compared to previous versions of the tier list that you might be more familiar with. Uh, examples include like the shotgun tier list, sniper tier list, etc. So when it comes to linear fusion rifles, they are designed basically for total damage. So you might think, you know, stuff like retrofit escapade is total damage. Linears are basically designed to do total damage while still maintaining a competitive amount of DPS. Now, granted, the definition of competitive, I've stretched it paper thin here because linears have very, very, very poor DPS compared to pretty much every other heavy weapon option in the game that is designed for damage, whether we're talking swords, rockets, exotics that are special, like, you know, two-tailed fox. Linears fall very, very flat on their face. But overall, linears are basically designed to do decent sustained damage and have very high total damage. That's kind of the design of what a linear is for. That's what people use them for, whether it be in day one or, you know, champions, whatever it is. So with that in mind, um, something I'd like to actually talk about that I don't talk about really often and that I haven't mentioned in previous tier lists is that I want to talk about the ideal version of a weapon. So if in the sandbox today, we had the opportunity to make the perfect weapon for like the perfect linear, for example, what perks would it have? What archetype would it have? You know, what origin traits would it have? So that's why um, I'm going to kind of describe that right now for linears and so you'll understand why certain options are in s tier or ranked higher because they're closer and closer to that ideal target so when we're talking an ideal linear fusion rifle in my opinion the perfect linear fusion rifle that meets the goal of highest sustained damage over a long period of time is a stasis linear because we want ballad horses stasis weapon boost at 15 percent stackable it's a precision and you might be wondering you know why precision aggressive frames um, have higher DPS. Well, the difference between an aggressive and a precision frame linear is actually very small. If you take away perk differences and you just account for shot to shot, it's only around 5%. It's a very, very small difference. And um, on the other hand, remember that linears have certain perks like triple tap and four times a charm. And because of triple tap and four times a charm, that's what actually enables them to get such high total damage numbers. So Cataclysmic, uh, compared to even a linear like Briar's Contempt with a much higher damage perk in Enhanced Surrounded, does a lot more total damage just because of four times a charm. Remember, four times a charm literally doubles the amount, essentially doubles the amount of ammo that you have in reserves. So for, you know, for now, there's no, you know, aggressive frame linear with triple tap or four times a charm, probably for obvious reasons, you'd have infinite ammo. Um, and because of that, I think precision frames are generally the better linear archetype and um, they fit the kind of vision, assuming you have an ammo regen perk, of sustained total damage a lot better than aggressive frames do. Aggressive frames seem to be going for like a, a more DPS oriented, like higher burst DPS oriented kind of damage configuration, but that's not really what linears are designed to do. So that being said, again, stasis precision frame, uh, I want it to be craftable, I want it to have a 6 mag. 23 in reserves like a normal precision linear and the perks that I would want it to have are enhanced four times a charm and Bane switch and surrounded because those are the two strongest highest bonus um, Perks that you can get on linears that you can actually maintain for an entire DPS phase uh, Origin trait doesn't matter that much, but I prefer to have bitter spite um, Because if you're doing damage to a boss and they're shooting you You're gonna have pretty much max reload every time you go to reload your linear regardless of whether you're standing in a well or not so that would be the perfect linear and um, that's a good segue into our actual tier list and now when I talk about each of the linears going down the list from briars all the way to thread and needle you'll kind of get a sense of why certain linears are placed higher because they meet that target better than other linears do. So you know with that out of the way let's uh, talk about briars contempt first. So briars contempt comes from root of nightmares uh, it is a craftable solar aggressive linear and this linear is basically the ultimate burst damage linear. Now that's kind of an oxymoron because like I said, linears, no matter what kind of perks you pack into them, their base frame, their base archetype, their base damage profile is so nerfed into the ground 
that it's just really not going to compete with any other burst heavy option or even some burst special options. So unfortunately, Briar's Contempt, even with its god roll of Rewind Rounds and Enhanced Surrounded, uh, even with Harmonic Resonance active, struggles, really struggles, does around equal damage to Wither Horde swapping Cataclysmic, and does much, much lower DPS than any other even remotely comparable burst DPS option, whether it's heavy GLs, rockets, whatever. That being said, if for whatever reason you need a linear, you absolutely need to use a linear, then Briar's Contempt is the highest DPS linear in the game. Um, doesn't have, you know, insanely high total damage because it doesn't have four times a charm. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the A tier, mostly because its strongest damage perk, the one that you're, everyone's going to be talking about, what you're using it for, is Surrounded, which is situational. And Harmonic Resonance is also situational. And of course, it doesn't have any ammo regen perk, which is kind of a big problem when it comes to meeting the identity of endgame PvE linear fusion rifles. So that's Briar's Contempt. I put in the A tier. It's ranked second on the list in terms of uh, first to 11th. And uh, let's keep going to Cataclysmic. So we're knocking off some of the best leaders in the game right off the bat since we're going alphabetically. Cataclysmic is from Val the Disciple. It's a craftable precision linear. And this thing has, I mean, you can basically ignore all the perks except two of them, fourth times a charm and bait and switch. Everyone knows these two perks. They are absolutely insane. Four times a charm on a linear essentially doubles its total damage. And bait and switch is a refreshable, no, sorry, not refreshable. I shouldn't say that, but it's an easy to proc, no kill requirement, 35% damage perk that lasts an obscenely long time, enough time for you to rattle off 10, 12 cataclysmic shots. So this thing is an absolute beast. Um, this is the quintessential linear in my opinion, has insane total damage uh, compared to literally every other linear as well as most other heavy weapons. Now granted, it does take like 40-50 seconds to dump all of Cataclysmic's ammo, but you know, in that time you are doing okay DPS and uh, it is easily one of the highest total damage heavy weapons in the game. So we're going to put that in the S tier. It's going to be the only S tier linear because I think it's truly the only linear that fits that definition of high total damage across a long period of time. Uh, with precision hits so yeah moving on i think cataclysmic wasn't really a surprise to anyone uh let's move to corsair's wrath so corsair's wrath this is i think one of the oldest non-sunset leaders in the game if not the oldest um this is a precision frame it's a solar just like cataclysmic and unfortunately it has basically no relevant linear perks if we compare it to today's day and age uh it has no ammo perks no reload perks that don't require kills and its best damage perk is high impact reserves, which is okay, but it doesn't have like rewind rounds or anything that would really synergize with high impact reserves and make it a damage perk worth using. So you're basically stuck here with like, I don't know, like moving target and high impact reserves or no distract. I don't know. This thing is awful. Uh, I think I ranked it all the way at the bottom of the tier list at rank 11 out of 11. It is pretty abysmal. It's pretty awful. So I'm not even going to you know, talk much more about that. Let's move on to Fire and Forget. Fire and Forget is a Stasis Season of the Seraph craftable aggressive linear. And um, this thing, it's uh, one of the only aggressive frames in the game, just like Briars and Storm Chaser. So it's a little bit unique in that regard, but that's kind of where the buck stops. Uh, the only good first column perk this thing has is Field Prep. And Field Prep is pretty much just worse than Triple Tap and... Uh, four times a charm on you know precision linears so i don't really think that's you know super great and then there's nothing else really in the first column that's good and then you have like frenzy and focused fury which are like fine i guess vice stinger post nerf is absolutely awful so that's almost not even a consideration uh i, I went ahead and put this thing in the b tier and um as we move further and further down this list uh i put fire and forget as the only linear in b tier and you'll understand why in a second but uh, there's a clear segmentation between it, what's above it, and what's below it. And we'll discuss that when we get there. But just know that Fire and Forget, it's a middling option for damage. Uh, if you're going to use a linear, I'd really just stick to the top two. Uh, I really wouldn't use an, any other linear ever. But, uh, you know, Fire and Forget, this is where it is, in my opinion. Okay, let's move on to Laser Painter. So... Laser Painter is, I think, the most recently released linear. It's from Gambit. It's a strand, so the first strand linear. It's a strand precision linear. And um, it has... It's all right, I guess. I mean, no triple tap, no four times. You know, it has like auto and clown, which are okay. And then it has like focus fury. That's basically all you're looking for on this weapon. Clown, auto, focus fury. It has nerfed vice stinger. And um, yeah, I mean, there's not really much to say about this thing. 
I'm going to go ahead and put it in the C tier. It's ranked 8th out of 11. So we're going to put it down here. Um, and you're going to come to see, like, as I add more and more linears to all these tiers, each of the tiers eventually forms its kind of own identity. It's like a folder that all the weapons in the tier match the same properties. And I, I'll explain that in a second. So yeah, that's Laser Painter. And let's move to Reed's Regret next. So Reed's Regret, uh, this thing is a classic. You know, lots of people uh, love this linear when it first came out in Trials. Triple tap firing, pre nerf vice, uh, stasis fonts. Remember like shards fonts? That was like pretty crazy, uh, pretty crazy time around day one King's Fall. Um, this thing was very, very powerful at the time. It's fallen from grace quite a lot. I mean, four times a charm is twice the potency of triple tap in terms of ammo return. And firing line has been absolutely destroyed by bait and switch in both solo and of, of course team context. So, you know, Reed's Regret kind of fallen by the wayside. Its only real benefit these days is that it is stasis. So I guess, you know, it benefits from Balladors while something like Cataclysmic doesn't. But that is not enough to pull this thing ahead of any of the uh, linears above it. That being said, I'm going to give this thing rank 4 out of 11, and it's going to go in the A tier. You know, it's a solid option. Uh, it has more total damage than some of the other linears that share the tier with it that are higher DPS. But um, that's all I, that's all the good things I can really say about it. So let's uh, let's move on and let's go to Sail Spy Pitch Glass. So Sail Spy Pitch Glass, this is a craftable plunder arc linear and it's a precision frame as well. And uh, unfortunately, Bungie kind of made this linear kind of a utility linear-ish kind of thing going on. Because if you look at the first column, there's pretty much nothing here that's good besides Clown. Clown will increase your DPS slightly by having you reload a bit less. And then you have like Frenzy and Focus, which are like, for the time period that this linear came out, those are pretty lame perks to have on a linear. So Frenzy and Focus is like bare minimum. Almost every linear has access to either Frenzy or Focus. This thing is nothing special. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the C tier right above Laser Painter. Okay, next up we have Storm Chaser. Storm Chaser, this thing is from the Duality Dungeon. Uh, it's a bit of a classic. Uh, back before this thing had its pre-charge rework because of aggressive frames being too powerful, uh, you were formerly able to actually start charging your next Storm Chaser burst while your previous one was still firing. And that actually increased the DPS by a substantial amount. However, after that change, you are now forced to charge your, you know, your aggressive frame linear bursts uh, after the previous burst has stopped firing. And so this thing has kind of been brought back down uh, from heaven to earth. And uh, now it only does, you know, like I said, aggressives only do around 5% more DPS than precisions if we're talking shot to shot on optimal batteries. So, you know, a lot less impressive. That being said, this thing does have a fairly good combination of perks. We have Clown Auto, we have Firing Frenzy, and of course we have Bitter Spite, which is a great perk to use if you don't have any reload assists. And this thing has a pretty low base reload stat at 25. So using something like Bitter Spite, getting that free, essentially free 50 reload almost all the time is really, really great. Uh, I think this linear is, you know, pretty solid. I'm going to go ahead and put this thing in the A tier, and I believe it's ranked third behind Briar's Contempt. So there you have it. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about Storm Chaser. Let's keep going to Taipan. So Taipan is basically the poor man's Reed's Regret. Uh, They're essentially the exact same. The only difference is Taipan is craftable, free, does not come from Trials of Osiris. And of course, there is also the fact that Taipan is void, which means that it doesn't enjoy that Balladurst Wrath Reavers boost. And back then, it didn't enjoy the free font of might that you could get from just popping a well using, you know, Supreme Wellmaker. So... That time has come and gone, and now Taipan, in, you know, in comparison to Reed's, is practically the same linear fusion. So I went ahead and put it just a smidge below Reed's Regret. Uh, no surprises there, they're basically the same linear, same origin traits, same good perks. Uh, it's just it's void instead of stasis, so I had to knock it down uh, one placement, right? One placement. Okay, we are down to our last two linears. Let's go ahead and look at Tarantula and Threaded Needle. Uh, these are also pretty old. Tarantula came out at a time when... Uh, Linears were most certainly not in contention for damage, and the perks definitely reflect that time period. If we look at our perks here, we have Field Prep, and then we have... Box Breathing? Uh, there was a running joke I had with my friends at the time where, you know, Field Prep Box Breathing Tarantula is, you know, it's the highest total damage linear in the game if you shoot one shot at a time and repox, reproc Box Breathing for every single shot. So, you know, it's kind of a joke. Um, this thing is pretty bad. <laughs> I don't think I need to tell you much about that. Uh, I think it is a bit better than Corsair's Wrath because it does have field prep, 
uh, which acts as a reload buff and a reserve buff. And box breathing, I guess it's like one shot burst in like GMs or something. I don't know. Please don't use Tarantula, okay? Please just do your friends a favor. Don't use Tarantula. Um, I, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Okay, finally. Finally, we're at our last linear here, Threaded Needle. So Threaded Needle, this thing was kind of a goat, kind of a legend uh, back when it was the, you know, the best linear in the game around the season of The Chosen around that time. Uh, Clown Frenzy was what everyone was kind of after. Um, but you know, it, it had Vorpal as well. There were some arguments as to whether Vorpal or Frenzy were better. These days, I think you'd take pretty much Clown or Auto and Frenzy. That's pretty much what I go for on this uh, linear. And um, as a result, I'm going to go ahead and put it at the bottom of C tier. So now that we've kind of tiered all these linears out, and uh, I want to kind of briefly explain what the categories are for each tier, right? So Cataclysmic obviously exists in a realm of its own. It has four times bait and switch. There's nothing in this game uh, in terms of linears that comes even close to the total damage. You have basically burst damage linears or linears that have a mediocre ammo return perk in triple tap and a mediocre, you know, um, damage perk in terms of uh, firing line so that's these two versus these two and then i think fire and forget belongs here because fire and forget is an aggressive frame with frenzy and field prep and none of these linears have triple tap so all of these are kind of in the same boat when it comes to total damage because none of them have ammo regen perks but this one's an aggressive which means it does slightly more dps than these ones down here um whereas all of these are pretty much you know clown frenzy auto frenzy field frenzy uh focus fury all of these are pretty much precision frames with no ammo regen perk and a mediocre 15 to 20 percent damage perk in the form of frenzy or focus fury and then these just don't even have like real damage perks they're not they're like toys they're like plastic toys they're not real guns okay um <laughs> that's pretty much all i have to say about linears i mean i don't think anybody is going to be particularly surprised about this tier list once i've explained it um this is my second tier list with the new tier list system that i i like a lot i think this is um much more clear and very well organized compared to my previous tier list. And if you want to take a look at the ranking system, here it is. No scoring involved, like I promised. Uh, you've got the ideal rank zero linear, right? And then you have all the other linears uh, falling behind it from Cataclysmic all the way down to Corsair's Wrath. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, I hopefully this spreadsheet answers them. And uh, yeah, I think that's it for heavy weapons. Uh, like I said, over the next couple weeks, you're going to see me revisit all the previous tier lists I made and convert them into this, and you're gonna see placements go up and down for certain weapons that were controversial before. And then um, we're gonna move on to exotic weapons and exotic armor. So I'm very, very excited for that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys then. Goodbye for now.